Hey folks, I apologize in advance if the lighting in this video is a little bit all over the place. The sun is pretty low in the sky and there's a lot of clouds there that it keeps hiding behind and then popping out of. So uh, if the lighting is a little bit odd or inconsistent here, I do apologize, but what are you gonna do? Oh, that. Okay, brilliant. So anyway, guys, uh, today I am gonna be uh, talking a little bit about MX Linux. I've been running it now on the laptop uh, for probably the best part of a month. Uh, so this is MX Linux, I believe it's 17.1, uh, hold on. Okay, yeah, so this, uh, I just typed up NeoFetch here, uh, and it says MX17, uh, but I think I downloaded 17.1, which might have been, you know, like a revision version. Um, it's the 64-bit version. Uh, it actually has been up now for 8 days, 21 hours. Um, I'll give you a few screenshots, but today I'm really just going to be sharing my overall experience with it, rather than... Um, you know, sort of do a do a, a walkthrough or a you know a a, a visual demonstration because uh, with most Linux distributions, it, they tend to end up looking very similar anyway. Especially if you kind of like the same selection of themes that I do. Uh, but MX Linux comes with an XFCE desktop and it comes with a decent selection of themes. I think I've got the Arc theme here. Oh, it says here, uh, yeah, Arc Darker. Um, and uh, I've got the Numix icon themes. So it's actually some reasonably straightforward um, and, and, and largely available uh, theming there. So my MX Linux uh, distribution doesn't look specifically any different than many other Linux distributions that I've tried. But today I'm just going to be talking about my experience and I'm going to be referring to maybe some of the more under the hood um, benefits that it offers. Um, but overall, this is a wonderful distribution and I can see why it's getting a lot of hype now these days. So I've talked about it on this uh, on this channel before, but now I kind of want to give you a bit more about my experience after a uh, after a while. So I think I said in previous videos that I was actually really happy with the distribution that I was running prior to MX Linux here, which was Linux Mint Debian Edition. Um, that is still a fantastic distribution, but the big issue that I had with it is that it only comes with the Cinnamon desktop as of its latest uh, release. And the Cinnamon desktop, it requires a fair amount of system resources. I noticed that it was you know, running quite high in regards to system resources on the machine, as well as the fans spinning up quite a lot. So I actually looked towards MX Linux for something that was a little bit lighter. It runs the XFCE uh, desktop and, um, and I have used it to actually revive older machines before with a significant amount of success. Now, I wouldn't necessarily say it's as uh, use, uh, user friendly is not necessarily the right word that I want to use here. Uh, maybe like newbie friendly or or even idiot proof because Linux Mint are do do a very good job at having uh, great defaults and without having to ask the user questions that they might not necessarily know the answer to. For example, uh, do they want to overwrite the grub config file and stuff like that? A lot of users aren't going to know what that even means. So as you might expect, MX Linux actually did a wonderful job in actually making better use of the system resources. However, unfortunately, it is a sad fact of modern internet browsing that modern internet browsing is just so resource intensive. Um, I literally just had uh, my uh, my Firefox browser open um, and it was running with three gigs of memory. I closed the browser and in a matter of seconds, it went down to 363 megabytes of memory that it was running at. So Firefox, you know, you can see the ridiculous overhead that Firefox has and it's not necessarily Firefox's fault. I had uh, Twitch tabs in there. I had YouTube tabs in there. Um, so it really was making a lot of use of, of memory there. Um, and that's just, you know, it, it doesn't need to be that bad. I mean, admittedly, I was doing a lot of multimedia-esque kind of stuff there, but uh, modern internet browsing, man, it's so much more resource intensive than it needs to be. Uh, um, but anyway, uh, that aside, uh, yeah, MX Linux really does make the, the best of it, though. Um, and I do notice that the fans spin up a lot less. I do notice that the CPU usage in general is significantly lower and that the memory usage is, broadly speaking, more efficient. Now, I say broadly speaking, speaking because yeah running uh which I, I largely use this as an internet browsing machine you know like a any savings or a lot of the savings that you get at the operating system level uh, are sort of made reasonably redundant by the massive overhead that you get from the um from the browser and the websites and all the other stuff that you're running at but um anyway that gripe aside MX Linux, if you really do want to revive old hardware, this isn't particularly old hardware, but man, does it run lightning fast now. It is, 
it, I don't have to wait for a damn thing to load up. Like it is just absolutely incredibly, incredibly speedy. So it is based on Debian stable. So what I did to make sure that some of my uh, more essential packages were uh, up to date was to install them as flat packs. Now, a wonderful thing about MX Linux is that it does support flat packs right out of the box. I, I believe that I did need to add the flat hub repository, um, which was just a um, you know, reasonably trivial matter. And then from then on in, um, installing flat packs was as easy as the, um, you know, it was just the command line um, commands as is with any other distribution that you want to install flat packs on. Um, and yeah, flat packs worked to treat, didn't have any issue whatsoever with the flat packs. It just goes to show how portable flat packs uh, are. Um, so I, I do actually kind of feel that I get the best of both worlds here. I get a nice, stable Debian base. I get a degree of user friendliness applied by the, uh, you know, the MX Linux tools on top of that. And I get late, my latest software with flat packs. It's all pretty win-win if you ask me. And MX Linux is really quite user friendly. Now, there were a few times that in order to get something set up the way that I wanted it to, that I needed to know some Linux terminology. It sort of assumed that I had some Linux uh, knowledge, which of course I do, and anyone that's been using Linux for any length of time really will be able to navigate that quite easily. But it's not necessarily as newbie friendly as maybe something like Linux Mint or Elementary or, or one of the you know specifically designed uh, distributions for said um, paradigm, but um, yeah, no, it, I mean, it was an absolute breeze to set up. In fact, it was one of those distributions that I will say required very little um, setup after it was installed. It has a great out of the box experience. Now, it does come with quite a lot of stuff pre installed, so depending on your perspective, uh, that might be a good or a bad thing. Uh, I believe it comes with Adobe Flash pre installed, and it came with a very easy way to install Codex as well. So I, I think I just clicked the install Codex button and then it just downloaded and installed the Codex for me. No problem there. It comes with a few tweak tools. It comes with MX Tweak, which was quite nice, although I uh, did actually have a, an additional, uh, you know, I, I did actually tweak it quite a lot. I must say one of the things about MX Linux is the default panel layout is to me a little bit baffling. Um, why they've got the, the menu in the bottom left-hand corner there and, and not in the top right, whatever. It's, um, I find it a little bit odd, but I mean, it's the easiest thing in the world. The MX Tweak tool can actually set it as a horizontal panel, but it's XFCE and XFCE is, is you know, wonderfully customizable anyway. So uh, really not too much of a problem there. Um, there are some, a fair number of, of Linux um, MX specific tools, which uh, I don't think for the most part I really uh, used. It does come with a NVIDIA driver installer. Now the uh, Triton that I tested it on doesn't have NVIDIA drivers, so, um, so I did manage to to test uh, to test that out, uh, but the you know all the, all the XFCE stuff works as you would expect it to. It comes with Gparted. It comes with a Grub customizer, which I didn't actually um, try out. Uh, it comes with Samba pre-installed. So it does come with a lot of stuff pre-installed, but and, and and actually in in a lot of cases I ended up um, taking out a lot of the stuff. I took out the fancy clipboard application. I took you know so there was a lot of stuff that I. Um, I ended up sort of not using or removing from the uh, the startup, uh, you know, the auto start ses session manager. Um, but all in all, an absolute wonderful experience. This is a Linux distribution for Linux users. Uh, it allows a great deal of customizability. It runs light as a feather. It calls itself a medium weight distribution, maybe because, I don't know, that's what it sort of considers the XFCE desktop to be. But really, I mean, it's great for reviving old hardware. Uh, and even, like I say, it, it, it runs like Grease Lightning on, uh, on something reasonably new as well. Um, and yeah, I, I, you know, I, I'm running this because I don't like to run the processor uh, too high too often because you get heating issues and the spans, uh, the fans spin up rather. So, um, so MX Linux just seems to have a, a better hold on the machine, seems to be a better fit than um, the most other distributions. Really, you get the benefits of Debian, uh, you get a level of user friendliness on top of that, and you get the uh, cutting edge applications that are allow uh, that are afforded to you via Flatpak. So yeah, like I say, it's a bit of a win-win-win in regards to that. It even comes with a selection of decent themes. Um, if, if I was going to offer a little bit of criticism, it might be that they could offer a few more background images in the uh, in the initial offerings. Uh, they've got some nice MX Linux-based ones, but um, but I mean, what's that of a criticism? Is nothing really, is it? It's a wonderful distribution. Uh, it's going to be staying on the machine for for quite some time to come, I think, because it just runs so damn well. Uh, it runs so damn well, it's reliable, 
It's um, and like I say, you get the best of all worlds with this one. You get the best of Debian, you get the best of the user friendliness that MX Linux provides, and you get the uh, cutting edge tools of Flatpak. What's not to like about it? Um, the the only gripe that I've ever had, you know, that I could I, I've ever had with this uh, distribution, and it's the same with any other distribution, is that just the sheer amount of overheads that the web browsers and the internet provides. Browsing the web is now such a resource intensive task that you need a decent computer to do it properly, which is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's you know, the World Wide Web is definitely a platform where we have had significant technological regression, if you ask me. But maybe that's a rant for a different day. Uh, but yeah, if you're looking for something that wants to that that you want to run lightning fast, um, that isn't necessarily Ubuntu based, um, has good flat pack support, all that kind of stuff. It has it, it's very pragmatic in the software that it includes with it. it. Includes a lot of software with it, and also it's easy to install codecs and Nvidia drivers and all that kind of stuff. Like I say, I can't vouch for the Nvidia um, stuff because I haven't tried it on a computer with a Nvidia card, but it's looking pretty good. Um, yeah, and I can see why uh, MX Linux seems to be the distribution that everyone's talking about these days, especially over on Mastodon. Um, and also, MX Linux, congratulations for having an active Mastodon account. I wish more distributions would. Um, and that's an absolute, you know, that's a thumbs up from, from me on, on that regard as well, because you're actually connecting with users in a space that's significantly more sympathetic to your distribution and your organization's goals and objectives. Um, and I think you're doing wonderful work. Wonderful work. Just, you know... Uh, keep on keeping on is all I've got to say because I really can't level a significant criticism against it. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's pretty good. It's pretty good. So I think I'm gonna gonna leave it there. But yeah, a MX Linux is one of those distributions that's um, that, that 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 seems to sit very comfortably in the broader Linux community, and uh, and that's a wonderful thing. So thank you very much for watching. That's about it for me today. Uh, until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.